Word processing is possible on the VIC-20 and can be surprisingly comfortable despite the small screen text area. Here I'm going to show a variety of word processors, each of which handle the 22 column restrictions in a different way. In many ways this is a follow-on video to another on the channel, Breadsheets on the Commodore VIC-20. The first word processor I want to show is Commodore's VIC Writer. It's got an interesting approach to dealing with the 22 character width of the VIC. It creates a display a bit like a typewriter, where the page moves as if on a carriage about the central typeface area. Now the VIC Writer has loaded, we can see the mode at the top of the screen being, being indicated by MD equals P, so this is primary mode. And then we want to enter scan mode, or edit scan edit mode, so that we can enter some text. The default width of the page is 80 characters, but I can enter a smaller width if I'd like, such as 60 characters here. And then I can enter keyboard mode, and that puts us in to, uh, to the main text entry mode. And then you can see, it's just like on a typewriter, uh, so I've got the central carriage moving about the text area, and then I can move across the page with F7, F8, 10 characters at a time. And if I enter some text here, Oh, one letter too short. That's okay. Good. And then I'll go down. So in this case, I'm going to go down with the arrow rather than with the cursor key, sorry, rather than the return key, because that would bring the carriage back to the left hand side, which I don't want. And then, um, oh, which I did, never mind. Great. And then I can start my left there. And then put some text in, just random text. There you go. So you can see how the word wrapping is working. And then uh, we can do simple things like uh, we can copy and paste. We can only copy and paste one line at a time. Oh, sorry, a whole line at a time. So if I want to copy, say, these three things here, I would return to the uh, scan edit mode by pressing the uh, CLR home key. And then I'm going to press C to copy. It says which mode I want to start, or at least what's the first line that I want to copy. Uh, so we'll copy the first line, or we'll copy the first three lines in fact. So I'll move down to here, press enter, and it says where do you want to copy it to. So if I copy it to there, and it will stay in the copy buffer so I can press again. And there we are, we've got two copies of it, uh, which is um, handier than on a typewriter. A VIC writer requires an 8K memory expansion. It was available on diskette and cassette, and there's a manual and, uh, and a link to a PRG file on the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. And then uh, and if we want to exit uh, scan mode, we can press X, and that'll return us back to primary mode. And, uh, and then we can print. So if we did print, and then if we just pressed enter now, it would print without a margin. However, I'm going to print with a 10 character margin. And, and there we are. So that's printed to the, uh, to the printer. So we'll have a look at that in a second. If I return back to scan mode. And then uh, one of the things I really like about VicWriter is it's so easy just to edit text. Uh, it, you can just scoot around the page. It's relatively easy to understand where we are on the page because of the uh, position indicated at the bottom. And overall, for simple word processing needs, uh, editing, copying, pasting, handling tabs, loading and saving, of course, printing multi multiple copies of the text, I think VicWriter works really well. And here's the text that we printed. I'm just showing the top of the page here, but you can see that it looks quite nice, apart from there's no margin at the top, which is something I would have corrected if I thought about it. But other than that, uh, perfectly usable. The next video I want to show is Quick Brown Fox. So it comes on a cartridge, and we can see here it's asking us for the width. Uh, zero is for a normal 22 column VIX screen. However, four and eight are because uh, Quick Brown Fox supports certain 40 and 80 column display adapters, which, uh, which would be great. You know, 40 columns, 80 columns on a VIX-20, fantastic. However, I haven't got one of those, so I'm going to be using a 22 column screen. 
So a uh, quick brown fox is a line editor and therefore we'll be switching back and forth between various modes. This is the main menu and we can see we've got various options here. If I want to enter some text I press T to enter text, press return and we can see that uh, the line feed is indicated with an at character and then Quick Brown Fox supports various embedded commands, so I'm going to use a tab command. I'm going to tab to column 40. I'm going to enter address similar as uh, as we did before. And uh, we can alter. Let's just put a bit more of this in. We can alter the current line that that we're editing. So you see me alter a few things here. But we can't alter other lines, uh, not within the uh, text entry mode in any case. So we can go back and forth on the line, but not uh, not beyond that. And uh, so you see I made an error there. So I'm going to just come out of of the uh, typing in mode. I'm going to go up a line. See so if I can find it. United. And there's so a line edit mode, by the way. I came out of the type mode by pressing escape key, which is the uh, arrow key. And then I'm going to alter this. So I'm going to press the R key to replace the text. And I'm going to replace it like that. And then press the arrow key again, or the escape key, to indicate that I've finished editing. And then I'll press it again to come back to the main menu. And I'll do a view from the start. And there we are, there's um, our United Kingdom. Don't worry about the, the fact that it's not on the same line. That's purely because of the uh, word wrap. So I can just show that here. So you can see there's no at symbol at the end of United. And that's because it's not a, a new line at that point. It's purely that it wraps on the screen. So if we continue our text, and then uh, it shows the last little bit of text that we had. And we'll continue here. Edit back on the line. And it wraps at the tenth column, or as near as it can after the tenth column. And all of this is that will be just wrapped naturally uh, on the page, depending on the, uh, the width of it. Again, we can really easily go back and alter the text that we're entering as long as it's still within the same uh, text entry line. Uh, we can um, center text using another ed embedded command, hash C. And when that uh, prints out, that'll be, um, will be centered. There are also other embedded commands for things like uh, making things, uh, making text bold or underlined, so we would use hash h for bold or hash o for overstrike, hash u for underline. These only work on some printers, so um, I'm not going to show it here because the printer I'm using doesn't su support it properly. And then uh, we can also do something interesting, we can use something called uh, boilerplate. Um, before I do, I'm just going to come out first into line edit mode. I'm going to go up the text a little bit find something interesting there. So here I can do, I can press D and that will delete a character at a time. I can do DW and that will delete a word. I can do DS and that would delete a sentence. I could do DP and that would delete a paragraph. So uh, that's um, quite useful if I go to the end of the text now. And then I can enter something called boilerplate text. So this is a set piece of text which I can then bring in uh, throughout my text at any point. So we enter a piece of text like this, we press F1. Oh, sorry, I need to come out of that first. So type F1, so I'm entering boilerplate 01. So I'll just say literally what it is. There we are. And then we indicate the end of the boiler text by playing F2. And then we're back into the normal text entry mode, but I want to enter some more boilerplates, so I'll press F1 again. So we're now on to boilerplate 2. And we'll look at that. Um, right. 
there we are and we'll press F2 come out of that and back into line mode and then if we scroll up we can see that these the boilerplate is indicated uh, it started with a tick and then it finishes with the uh, checkerboard pattern and that indicates the start and finish of each piece of uh, boilerplate and then we could insert that into the text somewhere so if we find somewhere interesting to insert that uh, we could insert it like I said, up here so let's uh, have a look where we are so let's insert it just there so if I press insert now and I'm going to put hash b zero one and then return return hash b zero two this is only for a uh, demonstration don't expect it to look nice and then I come out of that with uh, the escape key again and then back to the main menu and then if I press v and there we are we can see that our text our boilerplate has been inserted at those places where I used the hash b embedded command to insert them and then the rest of the text prints out as you would expect. Quick Brain Fox has uh, the other sort of facilities you might expect uh, we can use the move command from here to move and copy text uh, we can search and replace text using the uh, global edit G edit and, um, and I want to show the printing so uh, to print well we press P to print I want to print device 4 it's a Commodore printer we want the page number centered yes page number at the bottom yes uh, we don't want uh, a page prefix so we'll uh, press the escape key to stop the, the uh, page prefix we want 66 lines to the page um, yep so we want to use page numbers uh, we want to have one copy and this is whether we're going to use associated press uh, wrapping style and there we are that's printed off so we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that and see what we think while that was printing I realized there was one thing I should have shown because we can see that the text is the text will be too close to the left hand side uh, because there's no margin so we can very easily insert a margin using an embedded command I've already wiped the text that was in memory but I'll just enter some more so if I use the left margin um, we'll set a margin of 10 characters and then and then that'll make everything display nicer and then if I put in some text similar to what we had before get a bit of an idea of what that's going to look like and then if I print that yep and there we are and we'll see what that looks like and the printout shows the text looking nice but unfortunately missing the left hand margin so we if we turn to the second piece of text that we printed we can see now we've got that left hand margin and everything looks much nicer because of it Turning to SpeedScript now, this first appeared in Compute's Gazette in 1984 and was updated and appeared in their various publications over the next few years. So we can see here that SpeedScript has loaded and we can just start typing. So if I start typing here, and then we can go back, we can, e we can edit the text. Uh, I'm going to do something similar to that we did before. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put an address at the start so the first thing I want to do is set a margin uh, so that we can push the address over to the right hand side so um, to do that we embed a formatting command so we do pound symbol and then ask for its formatting uh, key we want to use so I want to use left and then I'm going to set uh, a margin of uh, say um, 40 so that's going to start printing at the 40th column um, I'm also going to change the right hand margin as well so again pound sign right and I'm going to change that to it defaults to 75 but I'm going to change it to 70 there we are and then I'm going to enter an address so it'll be similar to before
there we are and then I've entered that address now I want to change the left margin back to what it was well strictly speaking I don't want to do that because the normal left margin is 5 but I'm going to change it to 10 that's the 10th column there we are and then I can just carry on as, uh, as normal You can see how you can see how uh, it's wrapping quite naturally at the end of each line. The end of lines, the actual end of proper end of line marker, the line feed marker, is indicated by this less, left arrow that you can see after dear sir, madam, and after each line of the address above. So I'll type in some text here just so you can see how that's uh, how that's working. There you are. So you can see how it wrapped quite naturally, much better than Quick, uh, Quick Brain Fox in as much as it uses more of the screen before it starts wrapping. And then it's quite nice being able to just go around, easily edit and move about on the lines. You can see it's jumping between each sentence. So there we are. So I'm on the thank you for your uh, interest and then I move the down arrow and it'll jump straight away to the next sentence. So that's uh, quite nice when you're um, when you're editing text like this and you can use the left and right arrows to move about within the sentence. We can also use the function keys so we can use uh, F2 to move back a word, F1 to move forward a word, we can use F3 to move forward a sentence, F4 to move back a sentence and then F5 and F6 to move forward and back as a paragraph. So that's brilliant for scooting around the text and uh, and it's great because it, there's a single mode so we don't have to go back and forth between line edit mode and other modes like we did with uh, Quick Brown Fox. We're able to put the uh, the formatting commands in quite easily here and um, and we can center text as well so if I wanted to again pound sign three and that enters the uh, centering command and there we are that text will be centered uh, so the printing control is a little bit clunky in as much as we have to send print printer control codes for many things such as underline and italic uh, however other things like the center and the margins and other facilities are easily done with the built-in formatting support uh, the speaker is also able to print to disk, which is quite an interesting feature. So normally it's Control P to print, but if I do Control Shift P, then we've got the option of printing to screen, to disk, or to printer. So uh, if I printed to disk, then uh, then we could edit that formatted text with another program. And even even if we actually just wanted to save normally, um, if we save normally the text is saved as a series of screen codes. So even in its, no, its native format, it's still really easy to edit, but of course it won't be, uh, for, the, the text formatting won't have come into play at that point. So, um, so it depends on what you want to do with it. And then uh, say, um, if I come out of that, and if I, well, I could have pressed P for printer, but I'm just going to press P now, uh, Control P to print. And then we'll have a look and see what that text looks like. SpeedScript also has the other functions that you would expect, such as being able to search and replace text, as well as a delete buffer, which can be used to cut or copy and paste, as well as provide a crude and delete function. All in all, it's a nice editor. Uh, it's great that it's got the single mode and out of the ones I've shown so far, so far I would say it's the most comfortable. Well, here's the printout and you can see it looks nice. It's got nice margins at the top and the sides and it's perfectly presentable. To complete this demonstration of word processors on the VIC-20, I want to show right now. The reason I want to show this is because it gets very good reviews. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't really show it off because I don't have a manual for it. The nearest I can find are some notes that Anders Persson wrote on his site, and I've linked to that as well as the uh, cartridge image on the uh, on the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. It, um, it's got an interesting way of handling the 22 columns. If I type some text here,
you can see that uh, everything, the text editing stays on the middle line, highlighted in red. And then we've got that slightly annoying noise every time you type a, a character. And, uh, and if that wasn't annoying enough, when you get to the top of the text, it makes an extra annoying noise in the bottom of the text, another noise. You might like that, you might find it useful. Uh, but it is what it is. You can always turn the sound down on your television. I don't know if that's been picked up by the mic, but, um, but, but that's there. Uh, there's also the ability to search and replace within it. Uh, there's a delete buffer so we can uh, copy, cut and copy and paste uh, using that. And uh, it's got one odd feature. You can actually use a joystick to control the cursor, which doesn't seem doesn't seem any easier than the keyboard, but it might be useful if you're just reading text and just going through. It might be more comfortable, perhaps, to do it at a slight distance from the keyboard. Uh, but from what I can tell, it's a usable word processor, but I just can't really demonstrate it because I don't have the uh, manual, for, manual for it. Now, a slightly annoying thing, if I want to insert text, I have to make space for it in the same way you would at the basic prompt. So say I want to put um, some, some text here, I have to press the insert key a few times, Oh, need to put a bit more. Like that. So that uh, isn't very comfortable. There might be an easier way to uh, overcome that if I had the, the manual for it. Um, but as I say, it's got good reviews. Uh, so uh, I've, I've linked to uh, some reviews about it as well. Uh, so you may find that interesting. If uh, anyone does have the manual for it, do leave a comment below. In fact, comment about any of these uh, word processors. I'd love to hear what people think of them, if they've ever used them in their uh, small or home office. And unfortunately, I can't... Well, I can demonstrate the printing, but uh, it's not going to be very interesting because I can't do the, the addresses. Uh, I can't create a margin or tab space for the addresses. It does have tabs. Uh, I can show them with uh, Control-6, uh, Control-7, sorry, there's the tabs. But I don't know where those relate to the page, so they're not really all that useful to me. Uh, again, it's just the lack of having a manual, uh, but uh, maybe it'll turn up. Maybe I'll be able to do a future demonstration on that. Uh, for the moment, though, that's all I've really got to say. Uh, I think I might just print this off, just for the sense of the completeness again. There you are, and press return to print. OK, well, that's not going to work. I don't know why, but it wouldn't have been very interesting in any case. But hopefully you enjoyed seeing the selection of word processors. I think three of the word processors are really good. Uh, Vic Writer is nice and easy to use, uh, nice clear display, easy to understand where you are on the page and to edit text. Uh, Quick Brown Fox, a lot more powerful, uh, a little bit more complicated because you, it's a line editor, uh, but it's got the embedded commands which are really useful. And then there's SpeedScript, which I think is the best compromise because Although it has less features than uh, Quick Brown Fox, it's much easier to edit the text. The word wrap works much better because it uses more of the screen. And I think overall it's the most comfortable one and the most familiar to what we would be used to using today. Now let me know what you think in any case. It would be great if you could share this video with others that might be interested. Uh, do have a look at some of our other videos and please subscribe.